I have big plans for 2020 and I hope you all have big plans as well. Getting up off your couches and getting out there. And <laughs> Whoops. At this time every year, I make a year end roundup and I'm usually like, this was the best year ever. And I make a sweet montage of all my adventures and talk about how grateful I am. Well, this year, as we all know, has been different. That might be a nice way of saying it. This year has been a struggle, not only for me, but for a lot of people around the world. It's been a strange year, a hard year. When this first hit in March, I lost a handful of jobs and it was scary. I felt like we were living in a sci-fi movie. Every day I'd read more news from around the world that was just mind-blowing, it was nuts. Ah, but thank you to Netflix for taking my mind off the doom and gloom. Bunzai, Daniel LaRusso here for LaRusso Auto. Lockdown as a single guy was very lonely. It was just me in this little apartment eating a lot of cereal. But I'm not here to whine. My situation is pretty darn good and I'm incredibly grateful that I have a roof over my head and a kitchen full of beans and I'm very aware that there are people teetering on the edge of survival and my heart goes out to humanity as we navigate this challenging time. So I'm going to take this opportunity to talk about all the good things that happened in 2020. First and foremost, it all starts with you. Yes, you. You sitting right there. That's you. I get messages every day from people all over the world who tell me about how biking or running or just getting outside has made your lives better. Hi, my name is Armando. I'm a Cuban immigrant living in Milwaukee, Wisconsin right now. And biking has made a great impact in my life because when I got came here to the US, I didn't know a lot of people. And through biking, I got to meet a lot of new people who showed me the city. And not only that, but in the first couple of years, because the winters are pretty cold here, I was just kind of hunkering down and kind of hibernating during the winter. And they taught me how to go outside and have fun in the snow like uh, I did a lot of biking in the snow with the fat bikes and skiing and all this stuff so they kind of taught me how to enjoy the outdoors during the winter time not just during the summertime when everything is nice <laughs> so yeah it's just helped me make a lot of great friends uh, in a place where I didn't really know anybody bike riding in 2020 changed my life by getting me off the couch and away from potato chips out the door and on the road it allowed me to see more of my own backyard. It gave me a chance to enjoy fresh air, but it also stopped me from having really bad knees. I used to have bad knees when I ran on the pavement and even when I ran on dirt, but then I rode the bike and my pain went away. So it changed my life and allowed me to see so many more places in a shorter time with less pain. A few months back, I switched my car for a bicycle and now I am one less car on the road. Cycling has allowed me to play a huge role on the environment. It has also showed me a new way to look at everyday life. On a bicycle, I have the freedom to explore and discover new places in my city that would otherwise be overlooked in a car. Riding bikes quite literally saved my life. Um, from being a former drug addict to now being eight years sober, when I first got on a bike again as not a child, but as an adult on a bike, it was extremely foreign, but it gave me a high that I had never had in my life. Um, and since that day, it's been nothing but bikes. And the support of the communities that ride bikes is, one of the warmest communities I've ever found. My husband and I recently took a bike tour from Southern Utah to Columbus, Ohio to get married. And for my wedding ring, I asked for a bicycle. Um, I didn't want something that I could wear on my finger. I wanted something that I could put mileage and strength and movement under me. Running clears the mind. It's like your your internal therapy that you can deal with things. Uh, you can run things through your mind, how you may play things out better, worse, regardless. But it's helped me climb the, you know, the professional ladder. It's helped me personally with relationships. At the end of the day, keeping the body in motion 
just clears the mind, which makes you make better decisions. Pay attention to the little things out on the trail, the trees, the wind, the birds, the sky, clouds, all of that. Um, and just kind of lose yourself in the, in the soft sounds of the crunchy trail. And that provides a kind of peace that not a whole lot of other outlets can, can provide. I've run my first 100 mile ultra marathon this year. I've seen it um, inspire my kids and now we get to go out and run the trails around my house together. So, uh, ole, ole, ole. Cycling really helped me get through 2020. Whether I was riding to work, riding to the shops or just out riding, it meant I wasn't trapped in a car, trapped at home, trapped in traffic. It's something my fiance and I love doing together, something my son and I love doing together. It's quality time outside in nature. Cycling is fuel-free freedom of autonomy, self-sufficiency, a harmless freedom of choice, agency, adventure. Not a quick fix, but a permanent solution. It's focusing on what we have in common. Cycling is the definition of necessity, the mother of invention, innovation. Cycling is a timeless romance on a warm summer's night, or frigid rainy chills rolling down my spine. For the love of cycling, cycling is love. Love cycles. It was about four years ago when I really, really got into mountain biking. Um, and then from there, uh, I was able to get a job at a bike shop. Uh, it's just the community of biking uh, is, is really what's changed me. Finishing that first bike tour in October of 2019 changed my life. It awakened a passion for bike travel. It's given me confidence to work through my fears. Constantly testing myself on the bike has given me the gusto to try new adventures that I wouldn't even have thought of before. The bike has given me the life I always wanted, but was just too scared to go after. My name is Barzine. I'm a competitive powerlifter, and for 10 years I lived for squat day. That's all I cared about. Uh, when a car accident injury took a chunk of bone from my knee, it made it so I couldn't squat anymore. I didn't know what to do with myself. I gained a bunch of weight, got pretty unhealthy and pretty down. Uh, a friend of mine, Luke Young, suggested I get in a mountain bike and he, he's pretty pushy. So uh, I poured myself into that, ended up loving it. And now two or three times a week I'm in the trails. Um, it's the best I've felt in my adult life. And it kind of re-sparked me going back to the gym. Um, I still compete in bench press now. And from that I've taken my press to uh, top five in the world all time. And I owe the health to keep doing this and stay alive long enough to do this uh, at my size uh, to biking. It all started for me back in college when I had a back injury and I could barely walk or move. And my good friend Craig got me into cycling and helped me start moving again, helped me heal. And I really fell in love with it. So I started riding to work every day. I did that for eight years straight through rain, sleet, snow, everything. And it became a huge part of who I am. Uh, two years ago, I helped my wife Janice buy her first road bike, and just for Christmas this year, our son Alan got his first road bike. We love to ride as a family, and it brings us closer together. Uh, throughout the quarantine, your videos have inspired my good friend Bill and I to plan a ride almost 600 miles south to Key West in 2022. Hello, I'm Alan Rose, and this is Hartman Rocks outside of Gunnison, Colorado. This is one of the places I love to ride my bike and hike. You can see all the trails up here that people ride on in the summer, ski on this time of year, fat bike. It's a lovely area. But I wanted to talk to you about why I love to ride my bike so much. Um, I'm a cancer survivor and it was instrumental physically and mentally in my recovery. Running is my coping mechanism. When, able to, when I'm able to get out and run, I'm able to clear my mind. I'm able to work through issues that I've got going on, think through everything quietly with myself, only to listen to. Um, I come home and I have a newfound strength to get through the rest of the day or the rest of the week. Bikepacking has given me a sense of ownership of my own life. Before any trip, I'm really anxious, you know, I'm taking risks and I gotta make sure I have all the right gear. And then you just hit the road and you keep pedaling and pedaling and somewhere along the way you're surrounded by incredible humans enjoying some beautiful scenery and you realize this is my life i chose this 
And now I know I'm ready for whatever life could throw at me. I'm kind of excited about it. Biking has changed my life in three ways. One, more exercise. I feel great moving my body. Two, it's really fun to explore new places, check out the world that we live in. And three, it's brought me great friends and allowed me to travel to beautiful places. Cycling, what it's done for my life, is it just, uh, it's been something far cheaper than what therapy could ever buy. And I've discovered that uh, it's, it's where I get the most quiet time with God and reflection and nature and just all of creation and just miles and miles of a whole lot of me listening to, uh, to what my God wants for me. When I was 13, I really got into cycling. And uh, when I was 14, I got the opportunity to do a 500 mile tour around Colorado through Chile, Colorado camps. I'm now 57 and still uh, bike cycling is my main passion. What cycling has really done for me and now even through bike packing and gravel biking is it just opens up a whole new world of exploration. Running has changed me in so many ways, both in the physical and in the uh, spiritual, so to say, or the the mental. Um, it's, it's taken me to great places. It's brought on so many good friendships, not only here locally, but across the entire world. Just being able to connect at that interpersonal level and more than anything, taking me to great heights and kind of appreciating the world for what it is. And on top of that, it's made me a better person, not only with people I work with, but also being a uh, husband and a father. I run to keep myself grounded. I noticed a difference in my life. I learned how to be positive and inject that into my running and into life. Hey Ryan, I went on my first bike trip a couple years ago and quickly learned it's the absolute best way to travel. I love that you can smell and hear and sense everything going on around you. There's just no greater way to experience traveling through the countryside. I wanna say that you inspire me to get on my bike every day and not only have you inspired me, but also your buddies, John and Mira. They've inspired me too to get our little get up here. And this is my little buddy, Lucky. And I got my little rig here for him. And you together with John and Mira have inspired me to start not only riding more, but getting out and getting my dog out there with me. Thank you to everybody who sent in videos. And they inspire me. I'm constantly inspired by your stories of triumph. I want this channel to be more than just you watching a guy riding a bike and singing Olay. This is a community and I care about you and your goals and I want you to accomplish your wildest dreams. It gives me an idea. I want you all to think of something that scares you and then I want you to go out and do it. It can be anything like climbing a really tall tree or running your first 5K or going on your first bike packing adventure. After you complete your challenge, send me a photo of you looking all tired, sweaty, and awesome. Okay, let's talk about some of the great things that happened this year. In January, before we even knew what coronavirus was, I traveled to Baja, Mexico and rode the last half of the Baja Divide. It was there that I met John and Mira. We became fast friends and had the time of our lives. I mean, come on, how can you not love Mira? It was love at first sight with that goofy dog. You just want to lick and love, that's you. In March, I convinced my mom to travel with me to one of my favorite places on the planet, the Copper Canyons in Northern Mexico. I was really excited for my mom to experience the magic. And although I didn't know it at the time, this would be my only race of 2020. And another great thing happened in March. My little brother Ethan and his wife Melissa welcomed a new doozer to the world. That's right, there's more of us now. His name is Sander, and his favorite activity is swinging with his sister. What'd you think, Ellery? Good. How's Sander doing? doing good. <laughs> Looks like it, huh? During lockdown, I tried to put a smile on people's faces by riding bikes around town and blasting dance music. Happy Thursday, happy, happy Thursday. Scott Jurek and I ran a backyard marathon on the day that should have been the Boston Marathon. Okay. <laughs> Final six miles like this. Okay. <laughs> I went on a backyard bikepacking trip to my mom's house on her birthday 
Long distance burrito cheers. And I gave a virtual graduation speech to the class of 2020. Yes, this is weird. Oh, and I can't forget this one. Dana and I rode bikes to Denver to get a donut. Look at this amazing donut. It was the little things that made life brighter this year. In June, I auctioned off my Love Cycles bike and with your help, I donated $3,000 to Black Girls Do Bike and the Bikepacking Roots BIPOC Adventure Grant, which will fund bike adventures for people of color. Later that month, I went on an amazing adventure around Lake Tahoe with my dear friend, Dominic. Da -da 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 -da. Eat a cliff bar every day. In July, I set off on a dream trip down the Great Divide, riding a bike that I helped create with my friends at Priority. And guess who came to join the fun? John and Mira. And we have John! What is going on? You all saw the stunning beauty in my videos, but what really sticks with me are the people we met along the way. It was trail magic every day. We like to think that we have four acres of love right here and kindness, mm -hmm. and we just hope that uh, any of that love and kindness would just spread out into the world. So that's what that's why, that's we, why do we do it. That's why we do this. In August, Dana and I took advantage of a COVID road closure on Mount Evans and rode our bikes to the tippy top 14,000 feet. High five, Dana. Woo! Yeah. I celebrated five years of being sober, which is still the best decision. I've ever made, and Scott and I completed a local adventure called the Long's Peak Duathlon, biking 60 miles and running to the top of Long's Peak. Near Oh, and including this video, I uploaded 82 videos this year. That is a new record for me. Yeah! When I look back on all this, I think, right on, this dumpster fire of a year turned out okay. I learned a lot about patience, and I'm even more grateful than ever for the things that I do have. This year didn't go as planned for any of us, but like with most adventures, they never go exactly as planned. And I've learned from a lifetime of doing hard things that everything is temporary, and you gotta roll with the punches. Be grateful for the good times, and when challenging times hit, take a step back, breathe deeply, and work on a solution. Every day. There's something new and magical. Nature is always putting on a show. I'm gonna end by saying thank you. Creating videos on YouTube is a dream job and I couldn't do it without your support. My goal since day one has always been to inspire people to get off their couches. And with every year that passes, I get to reach more people and that is so cool. So keep on sharing, liking, and watching my videos. And if you feel inspired, you can join my Patreon so I can keep this channel moving forward. All right, I don't wanna jinx us, but here's to a great 2021. I have a feeling that things are gonna be better. And if they aren't, well, we learned some great coping mechanisms this year that will help us on our journey. I'm wishing you all the best, and here is a big, safe COVID hug I'm sending to all of you. Now get out there. Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah, uh.